Okay, so getting into the uh, to the tool vice, getting kind of kind of jumping directly into assemblies. That this is going to be a little bit higher end assembly, more pieces, more uh, more geometry, but more chance to talk about the uh, the mate relations and going through the complete process of generating the parts, generating the assembly, putting the part assembly and the parts, bill of material tables, everything into the drawings, generating the, the detail package. So would expect that this would go on for for a couple of classes. So we'll start off with the um, uh, the plug. And let me pull it up on the other screen so I can keep it uh, keep it handy. And we'll go through the handle. And I've already created a, uh, a folder on my drive somewhere for this uh, for this tool vise. So I'm going to break these out. And one of the things I want to do is design for manufacture. All right, so we can reproduce everything that's on this drawing, but if I also have to make it, then I want to take into consideration what what is the easiest way to put this into a CNC machine, put this on a manual machine. I don't want, I don't have forging capabilities. I don't have um, uh, casting capabilities. And a lot of these uh, pieces were designed for that process. So one of the things I'm going to do is simplify the design wherever possible so that I can make this a little bit more user-friendly and manufacturable. All right, so if we need some relief somewhere, go through that, uh, that process, uh, we'll build that in. Um, the scale, well, the scale might be a purchase part, but that's also one of those, well, I want to try it in sheet metal and uh, put the, uh, the, 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 uh, the tick marks on and then uh, see what uh, what comes uh, comes from the uh, the mix. The base, um, as mentioned, this has the radiuses and uh, extra geometry that I really don't think is is necessary. That if we make this out of uh, steel or um, you know any of our uh, material choices, that we should be able to um, uh, simplify this uh, this quite a bit. And not only speed up the process of design, but speed up the process of manufacture. All right. So it comes back to, are we making, my favorite question, are we making one of these to replace a piece that got damaged or just used up? Or are we going into production to make hundreds, uh, hundreds or thousands of these? All right. So that comes into, um, comes into the mix. All right. So looking at this, the other question going into the assemblies is what can I do for subassemblies? Are there any parts that I can put into configurations? So far on the first pass, no, not really. All right, but it may come out that we can do a, a subassembly of uh, the, the rotary with the, um, the, the set screws in it, and that could be our subassembly so that they move together and have, have that built in. Um, the um, the scale in place, so I say that, and then I instantly start identifying a subassembly. You know, these these four set screws, the rotary, the scale, and as we get further into the uh, to the mix, what else do I have for uh, for possible uh, rotations? So staying in the um, the SolidWorks 2017, um, and just you know, we're at that crossover point where in another uh, six months or so, 2018 will be coming out, 2017 for education, and um, you know, start to to see this more in industry if it's not already um, uh, not already there. So we have an inch uh, piece. Um, some of these are still kind of hard to visualize what um, uh, what the uh, the design uh, intent was. That um, even though this is going to have an 062 radius. There really isn't a lot of geometry there, so um, we'll uh, we'll see what it comes out as in the uh, the model. All right, so for the uh, for the front plane, we're drawing the uh, the plug, and it's going to be standard stock size uh, for five sixteenths brass. And we're at that point in the assembly where 
whether I need four decimal places or not, I'm going to carry it out. And because stackups are now becoming more critical as we bring these parts into assemblies, things that um, uh, you know, objects, geometry that may not have been as critical is going to start to sneak up on us and um, and create problems if um, uh, we we generate too many rounding errors. So to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and just get into the habit of carrying it out the four decimal places. So 7 16ths, 4.4375. Oh, good. All of the uh, the appearances and everything's still on. So I don't like working in real view graphics. I don't like the shadows. Uh, ambient inclusion isn't doing anything for me. And as far as the screen gradient, I haven't set this one for the um, to be plain white as the default. But to me, that is a much, much cleaner, less, uh, I guess, less noise running in the, in the background. All right. So on the, uh, the right plane, okay, let's go that way and bring that up to a continuous arc, continuous tangent arc. And because this is a cylinder, we're going to double check. Do I have the uh, the coincidence, but I don't see a tangency. So what I'm looking for is if I can grab, I uh, found the edge, but I'm not seeing that silhouette edge. So I may have to search a little bit over that. All right, so that was to the um, to the vertex. No, nope, not having much luck finding that one either. All right, so that's going to have to go to a fillet. All right, so to the corner, that's our intersection. And I'm still not getting that silhouette edge. All right, so it didn't go fully defined. All right, so need to check the uh, the settings here. All right, since it wasn't coming up with the silhouette edge, we're gonna look for a coincident. And there's coincident. All right, so we got that to go fully defined. And then to the uh, to the end, we have a 30 degree. So what I would, was expecting to see is where the right plane intersects the cylinder, it creates a line along that surface. Uh, sometimes uh, for various commands, we can uh, we can get uh, that silhouette edge symbol to pop up and use it as opposed to looking for the coincidence. All right, so let's go with the uh, the 30 degrees. Get all of that set before we go into the fillet. And a 0.062 fillet. Go ahead and accept. All right, so don't necessarily need this um, uh, this, this tail on the uh, the upper cylinder, but it's not going to hurt anything to leave it. If it does, we can always change it over to a construction line. We're going to do the extrude cut, set it for through all both. Make sure to check the direction of the, um, the arrow. We'll either flip side to cut or click on the arrow. And that will set the direction for the material to be removed. Okay, so a little more radius than I kind of envisioned, but not a whole lot. Um, let's see, what did we have for a, uh, for a chamfer, a 16th chamfer? So we'll go into the chamfer command, 45 degrees, 0.062, and accept. All right, so we can save that as, uh, we've got to come up with our naming, um, naming convention. 
And let's see, I put this into the Google Drive. Toolvice. <clears throat> and so we're going to pick up the, um, the file name clamp plug and go ahead and put in the, uh, the number associated with it. Save. Alright, so let's go ahead and close that. We'll look at the uh, the next piece is the uh, the handle and even with all of the uh, the rounding uh, we can on the manufacturing side make this uh, a little bit simpler if we get into the uh, to the radiuses I believe that's going to be the handles um, through here so if we were to um, let's see probably don't need as much relief or we could put just a, a very small relief on the uh, the side up against the, uh, the block. Um, kind of hard to tell if it was uh, it's flush but they're showing the radius so maybe that back side is, uh, is flush already symmetric on the center line. Uh, if we eliminate the uh, the three and a half inch uh, radius and go with a small relief we can simplify that part and um, probably speed up the manufacturing process. So let's go with the um, the origin at the uh, the center. And we'll generate the um, the two and that got a little bit big. So radius of 0 0.25. We'll go ahead and switch that over to a diameter. And notice that my center point is slightly off the origin, so I missed. Uh, we have a dimension of 0.251 to 0.254. So light to medium press. We'll go with our maximum material condition, the smallest number. And I'm going to grab that center point and drag it back to their geometry, back to the origin. Go ahead and put in a, uh, a center line. And the center point arc at the, um, the end, we have a, an overall of 1.5. So from, from the origin, to the arc and as long as you're selecting on the arc you're going to be able to pick for max min conditions. All right, so and the way to pick for the max min condition is to go under leaders and at the very bottom will be a max condition and that dimension now is 1.5 so my initial whatever it selected is not really a concern. We're going to go ahead and select that dimension so that we can get over to um, it's max condition and, uh, and pick it up from there. So I want the, um, the orientation of this radius to be in one direction because machining uh, on the machining side, I can uh, come in, have a little bit of sacrificial material or maybe a fixture that I can run around on this part and, um, and pick up that, um, that geometry. So I'm going to reverse the, uh, the radius of 0.125 and had something previously so I had the endpoint selected from where I was dragging it and if we stay with the uh, the radius tangent arc set that to um, to tangency to the circle and that one had a fairly big radius on it three and a half inches And double check, no tangency. All right, so the upper side's um, that's pretty good. As it moves, that shows me that that one missed the uh, the tangency as well. And we'll just go ahead and mirror that since I have it available. Okay, so with the contours and regions, going to be able to um, 
to bring this out in one move and then um, go back. Uh, go back across the um, the face on the uh, the second. So extrude. Want to uh, reverse the direction because I'm going to reuse this sketch to put a little bit of relief um, on the part that goes up against the block. Um, this is five sixteenths thick, so it is fairly small, half inch by five. Oh, and I didn't select my contours and regions, so basically everything. Okay, going to expand out, make sure to select that sketch. Go into the extrude cut. Pick the region. And we're just going to put enough of a relief there, so 0 0.06625. Um, On the, uh, the top plane then, go back in and find um, find a center line. Okay, that one got a little big. Um, eighth inch drill to intersect uh, piece eight, so 0.125. And we'll go ahead with the, uh, the center line from the origin back to midpoint, drag to the midpoint. And then this can just be a straight cut, extrude cut, through all, and we'll flip the flip the direction. All right. So again, simplified to for manufacturing, this becomes item seven, the locking handle. If we need to uh, add the, the aesthetic geometry, we'll, we'll do it on the assembly side where uh, after we've kind of looked at the manufacturing process, what we need to, um, to make these parts. All right, so I'm going to jump over the scale for now. And we're going to go to the, um, the saddle. So looking at the saddle, I don't know that we need this raised uh, reinforced area. Uh, 0 0.625. Uh, we'll look what we get for the um, for the clearance. But from a machining standpoint, if we don't need the radiuses, if we can just do edge breaks, uh, we can get all of this from uh, pretty much one one setup, one or two setups. So file, new operation, or sorry, new <laughs> part uh, inch. And we're going to, uh, to select the, uh, the front profile. So this is symmetrical. Go into the center line, vertical, infinite length. Got a little bit uh, long on the geometry. So let's go up over. And then all of that can be mirrored. All right, so overall length is uh, 6.5. Let's see, 0.5 on the end. And then um, 9 sixteenths to the top, 5.625. Let's see, across the uh, the flats then, three and a half. And let's just go with the uh, the three-point arc from endpoint to endpoint. And drag that down. Make sure that the center is coincident back to the uh, to the center line. Okay, so the center point picks up and then a radius of two inches. All right, so across the flat, then let's see, that's to the uh, to the circle. Let's see, we have the symmetry, but ah, we have a um, a limit dimension of 0.5 to 0.495. So in this case. 
would want to, um, to go to the maximum material condition would be the largest number. So again, we're going to use that leader. I don't care what the initial dimension is. Go into the leaders, set it to a min condition. And our min condition then will be half an inch. Okay, so with that, um, that direction, I do kind of want that to be uh, mid-plane. So we're going to extrude. Set up for mid-plane and distance is 3.375. All right, so we're not worried about fillets. Um, let's see, that was item 7, item 10. Okay, well, we'll see how that, um, how that plays out. Going to, um, to make the assumption that um, we'll be locking this from both sides. So um, in the description, uh, quarter 20, uh, 13 sixteenths deep, and uh, for, the, for the tap drill, and quarter 20, uh, 5 eighths deep for the threads. And then the pin. Um, an assembly with plates for eighth inch dowel pins. All right, so I'm going to lock that two uh, together. I don't know that that needs to be tight. We could probably drill and ream that and hold it, hold close enough tolerances. And let's see, both of those are called out four times. So yes, it's on, on both sides. So let's go with the, um, the tapped holes first. I'm going to start the S key and go into the hole wizard. A um, little bit different for 2017, some of the graphics. Pick up the, uh, the tap, make sure that we are in ANSI inch. And that we have quarter 20 selected. In condition, well, we're not going to drill 3 and 3 eighths deep unless we absolutely have to. So blind in condition is 0.812. And... Thread condition 0.625. All right, we're going to check. Uh, we'll do the call out. Don't need a near side countersink. Um, just basic uh, edge break. All right, so for position. So I'm going to go ahead and set for symmetry. Missed mirror entities. All right, so entity to mirror, mirror about. And not seeing the preview. So where is my preview? There we go. All right, so 1.5 off of the center line. And the height. 0.781. There's a, an interesting fraction for you. Okay, so those get it fully defined. And we'll go to the back side. Switch over to wireframe, back to the S key, into the hole wizard. Same settings apply. All right, so ANSI inch, quarter 20, 812, 625. Go into the positions, and we're going to look for the center points of the previous threaded holes. And accept. All right, so for the, um, for the ream, let's go with the um, S key, hole wizard, Pick up the uh, the standard drill. Um, yeah, I'm not sure how I want to call that out, but we'll um, we'll get it in there. So I'll go with the uh, the number 31. And 
calls out for a redrill of 0.56, so it'd say our, our min condition, eighth inch, well, 120 drill, three quarters going to be, be pushing it for depth, but we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so previously I mirrored, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the, uh, the second point. And if we do not mirror or we only have the, uh, the two items, then I can control select, control select, and control select the center line and make those points symmetric and it'll have the same effect as if I had mirrored them. All right, so that position um, is not called out, so it must be on the, um, on the plate. All right, so we're going to have to um, to leave those for later. Go ahead and set the position, and then for the uh, for the eighth inch dowel pin, then I'm going to switch over to fractional. Go to eighth inch. 0.562, so really it didn't need to go to um, to three quarters. Probably could have stopped it at five eighths, and jumped out of um, out of the uh, the whole wizard feature. Go ahead and set set those locations on top of the existing. All right, so we line the to line these up. We know we're going to have to come back after the uh, the plates are uh, created and um, and pick up that geometry again. All right, so should have uh, stayed. It doesn't really matter the order. I should have stayed in the number thirty one drill just because all of the settings were uh, were already there. All right, so we're going to have to go back to all drill sizes. Oh, close enough. And 0.75. Position will pick up the, um, the existing. Okay, and then back in for the... Wizard, pick up the eighth inch, 0.562, and one more shot at the center points, and accept. All right, so we're going to just see that little bit of hint for the uh, the cylinder, and that gives us geometry enough to uh, to call out for a drill and ring. All right, so I'm getting far enough into this. We're going to go ahead and save. This is item one, the saddle. And save. All right, so for the um, the groove, then they're calling out nine sixteenths. So one of the quick ways to create to start that up round, well, we could go with the uh, the slot, and let's see the depth. Mm, depth to the end is showing at one inch, so I don't have enough geometry there yet. Going to right click, select the midpoint, control select the edge, make the midpoint uh, the midpoint of the uh, the edge. I'm going to go ahead and keep the um, um, the end line and complete out the uh, the tangent arc. So from the from the edge. Again, I don't care about the dimension. We have a one inch overall to the um, to the top of the arc. So we're going back to a max condition. And one inch. So one more center line. And that did not get set to construction so pick it switch it over to construction geometry and mirror the entities 
Oh, and because that is a second construction line, it's going to potentially use um, use those or uh, since it's created the confusion, it'll go ahead and mirror to the uh, to the other side. So features extrude cut up to next through all. And last that we'll put in here is going to be the radiuses on the corners and those are set to 0.3 for 3 eighths. Fillet 0.375. And then accept. Okay, so from the uh, from the machining standpoint, we have the um, the top geometry. Um, whether we fixture for this or we leave sacrificial material on the bottom side to fly cut, machine, grind off, um, we can get around most of this geometry if we needed to a three axis. Otherwise, we'd be coming in on the side profile for the bore, but we could do that on the um, one of the two end, end pieces of geometry. So we're going to call that um, call that good. Um, let's see, three point three seven. Oh, I did miss one piece of geometry. So let's do a quick rollback. And this will probably mess up all of these, all right? So the uh, the geometry in question here um, picked up the 3.50, 3.503. Um, that's either being established as a um, well, it doesn't really have any grind symbols on it, but it is a tighter tolerance for the um, the rotation. So that being the case. Um, I need to put need to get that geometry in. So let's take the uh, the roll back, and I'm going to roll back to well, back to the, almost the beginning where the quarter twenty started. And from the uh, the top, we can pick one of those uh, those faces. We'll generate a uh, a rectangle and another rectangle. And symmetry isn't as critical here, but I do need to set those uh, those equal. All right, I don't have enough geometry to worry about the uh, the center line. Um, so if I set those equal, it'll have the same effect. And our maximum material condition will be 3.503. .503. And from the uh, the machining standpoint. Oh, that builds out. Okay, <laughs> so let's see, 495 to the face, so I was thinking that was an undercut. Yep, 3375, all right, so we have an eighth inch on either, uh, eighth inch overall, that was the 062. All right, so we have to build out a little bit different. All right, so I don't need that sketch. I don't really need the, uh, the rollback, but I'm going to stay in the rollback. Let's go ahead and delete that um, that out. We'll open up a sketch on the end face and convert in geometry. All right, so I convert those entities. We're going to probably end up with what amounts to a zero thickness. So that means this is going to have to be uh, built out enough and then that also complicates the um, that end face a little bit so on the design for manufacture I'm starting down this path that I really have to stop and question would it be easier better to make the uh, the base wider instead of ending up with that undercut um, or is that going to be necessary all right so I'm going to go ahead and kick that out for now. We'll uh, we'll save that one for uh, for later. So what that means is that that whole face is going to become a tight tolerance face. And then we'll see if there's any 
um, any issues when we get to the uh, to the assembly side with doing that. All right, so it's a little bit wider, a little bit, a um, little bit um, tighter on the tolerance for the overall, but um, really, it's it's kind of in that region that I don't think it's as much of a concern over that uh, that whole face. All right, so we're going to come back to the uh, to the scale. And we'll see how close um, close the numbers come to. Well, we do have one more. We'll do the uh, the eccentric. All right. So the eccentric has one cylinder and then slightly offset, so that as it um, as it rotates, and then it has a one thousandth on the uh, the grind for for clearance for the uh, the through hole. So let's um, let's go ahead with that. <clears throat> All right, so this should just be a couple of cylinders. All right, so on the um, the OD cylinders, 0.250 to 0.247. So we're going to go with um, 0.250. And that has a length of... The 1.281 minus, uh, but because it intersects, now yeah, we can go ahead and send it the uh, the whole way. See if there's any interference. So 1.281, and if we wanted to carry it out, 25. All right, so pick that one up from the end piece of geometry then. Let's see, there's a 15 thousandths. So let's get the, uh, the sketch open. Oh, and then um, said for this, we're going to go 0.312. on the um, on the face and then that has enough that it does does clear need to set a vertical relation to bring it back in and this is one of those dimensions that I would want to right click and say mark for drawing because we're going to go back in and set it to four decimal places and I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, the tolerance on it that this is a, um, a limit dimension and we're setting it for a minus 0 0.001. All right, so we fill that in. That gets us the uh, the geometry, and then this is going to come back on the extrude. All right, need to double check the the direction here. All right, so 0 0.625. And just let it go ahead and intersect the um, the first part. All right, and then an 031 by 45 degree chamfer on the back side. Well, let's save the chamfer for last. Um, on the uh, the right plane, now yeah, whichever way I go. On center line, we have for the uh, for the pin. And all right, so that's going to be a, a stop. All right, so 125 drill 0625 deep. So that makes it a little more complicated. We're going to build in the uh, the drill tip, and I can't use a uh, standard cut extrude. All right, so um, preference would be to offset the uh, the plane and pick that plane as my um, for my hole wizard. So highlight the right plane, control select and drag the right plane out. That'll create the, um, the auxiliary or a um, um, reference plane. I want it to be parallel and then tangent to the, uh, the outside face of the cylinder. Since there's no clocking, no uh, geometry to really work with, 
Um, let me put that one in, and I think I went to the, um, well, based on their geometry, I went the wrong way. All right, so I brought it forward. I need to send it, so we're going to go back in, edit the feature. And if I flip the offset, it will send it to the, uh, to the other side. All right, so open up the, the sketch. No, nope, still don't need a sketch. I need the whole wizard. All right, so S key, whole wizard. And this is going to be a, an eighth inch drill, 0.062 deep. So they don't tell us to the shoulder, but if there's going to be any kind of spot there, we're going to have to, uh, to check it for depth. So typically the 0.062 would be to the, uh, to the shoulder and the point takes off from there. So we'll see what that looks like and what it's engaging on the, uh, the assembly side. All right, so there's our point. And do we not have a dimension for that one? All right, so there's something else we're going to have to line up out of the, um, out of the assembly for, uh, for its engagement. All right, we can go back and hide the plane. Pick up for the, uh, the chamfer, 0.031. Yeah, let's see, nothing on the, uh, the lead, so we'll say uh, this is item 8 and the eccentric. Okay. Alright, so the fun one will be the um, the scale and the protractor scale let's see do we have the diameter on and let's see that's the um, the upper compound uh, the compound tool holder. Looks like it gets the uh, the scale, and it has a well, it has a pretty tight tolerance itself, three point four four to three point four three five, so five thousandths. Okay, so let's see if I can pull this over. All right, so there's the 3.44. So what I want to try is the sheet metal. So we did a little sheet metal at the end of uh, chapter three, but uh, the one that um, that comes up with this uh, protractor, this um, the scale. Is going to be that we're we need to um, to wrap this. So uh, one required aluminum and purchase. Well, what if we want to make it? What if we can't find one, or they're not made in that uh, that size? All right. So on the uh, the top plane, I'm going to open up the uh, the sketch, and this is going to need to be a center point arc because we're going to leave this open. And then I'll go ahead and put the uh, the center line. And I'm going to set for the uh, for the diameter. Oh, I had one too many selected there, so 3.44. Make that coincident. And we'll set the points to symmetric. And I probably want to close those up fairly tight. So let's go with um, I'll leave 40 thousandths. 
All right, so a very small gap. <clears throat> All right, so they're calling this a um, number 20 uh, gauge, so 031. So this is going to switch us over to sheet metal. So I need to activate that. And this is going to be a base flange tab. Um, distance is going to be a quarter inch tall. And nothing in direction two, the sheet metal 0 0.031. Yeah, they're calling it 032. All right. Um, K factor, we're going to leave at 0.3 to 0.5, whatever is there. And go ahead and accept. All right, so what that does is give me a ring that I can flatten. And so that will show the um, um, show the uh, the loop as it's um, as it's built. What I can't do on the, on that mix is um, with the uh, the flatten is that's not going to be uh, where I'm going to add additional geometry. So let's see, is it the end face that we unfold from? All right, so that's my fixed face. That's where I want it to. Um, Unfold, we'll collect all and see if it's going to cooperate. And it flattens out. All right, so from this end, we can uh, set up the, um, the cut extrude. Oh. Uh, let's see, I went to the tangent arc, I need a three-point arc. And let's see, those are going to be vertical. And pick up a tangent. Okay, so a couple of ways to uh, to approach this. Let's go to the uh, to the center line and pick up the midpoint. And yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and mirror that geometry. All right, so that picks up the ends. Uh, if we convert the um, the edges in, that will give me the the two pieces since this is fairly small. I don't really want to keep zooming in and out. And the thing with the converted entity is that the endpoints are shown as defined, but until um, I can drag them away until they are um, actually related, they are um, they are capable of being moved. All right. So um, the reason that I did that is I want to perform the uh, the cut extrude. And we can flip the side to cut, link it to thickness. And so instead of removing the material and leaving the ends, it should remove the ends and leave the material. All right, so the uh, 136 holes through. So back into the, uh, the hole wizard. And let's see, I need to um, turn on the other uh, show decimals. And there's the number 29. You can set it to through all, pick up the positions, find the center point. And where's the center point? There we go. Find our center points. And accept the um, the sketch. All right. So getting uh, far enough into this that um, number nine, the protractor scale. So if I could find one of these online uh, from the manufacturer or from um, Segment Master Car or, or the like, um, I would still have to be able to go in and bend this to be able to wrap it around the uh, the part make it uh, make it functional 
All right, so. Need another sketch. And the question is, how are we going to, uh, to generate this, uh, this geometry? So uh, a couple of ways, if we have access to the a laser engraver, then we're going to generate the geometry that way. If not, we're probably going to have to do the, uh, the standard engrave. And I really don't want to use true type fonts and um, all of the, um, the additional geometry. So that being the case, um, let's start the um, at the uh, the center. Locate my center here. All right, so there's the midpoint. Um, let's see what do we have for the tips. They gave us the 3:30 seconds on the height. All right, so initially we're going to have sketches, and that presents um, from visual. It's going to get kind of busy, and not really be geometry that is. Uh, all that com convenient to dimension to. So let's see the um, the second one here. Is a height of uh, 062. And not sure what that pattern is going to be, but we need to give it something to start since we're picking up angular degrees. Uh, let's start off with um, 20 thousandths. Right? And then we're going to have um, four more of those. So we'll stay with linear sketch pattern. Four items, 0 0.02. And then the next um, tech, next tick mark will be um, another large one. So go ahead and set those to horizontal. And need one more dimension. All right, so if I set those right, then we have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. All of this gets another linear pattern. Set at point 0.1, and we're going to go until we run off of the uh, the scale. All right. <laughs> so apparently they're a little bit wider than uh, than that. Let's see our text size. All right, so there would be a total of 90 marks. We're doing five at a time. So that should be 18 total. Okay, so those are pretty close together. Oh, let's see, 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, nope, you had half angles, nope, 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 35, 50, 75, 80, and need one more at the, um, the end to tie it to 90. So let's um, play a few little games here with our patterns. All right, so I took the uh, the dimensions back out so that I can drag those and have them stay consistent or not. Okay, so going to have to work on that logic.
Nope, it's not letting me have that. So oh, I'm set to automatically, um, when it's over to fine, set to driving dimensions. So that's why those are. Yeah, let's try one more center line. I didn't think this through far enough. And over to find. Okay, well, there's one to find. All right, last one for effect. Mm, still moving. Okay, so the pattern wasn't the uh, the best choice there. All right, so make this dimension driven. No. Nope. Okay, so what did that pick up? Okay, so since I put in those uh, those center lines, we need to take those out. Let's see if we can set up a relation here. Okay, so that gets those defined all the way except for the last one. Okay, so probably just made the um, segment or Otherwise, but let's go ahead with the same strategy. I'll set those to equal. Nope. We may have to build them all into that, uh, in which case the segment would have been. It's a better choice. Yeah. Overdefined, nice. Oh, painting myself into a corner as we go. So I only need one more segment there. All right, so still over defined, but otherwise correct. All right, so it's giving me cannot be determined. Let's back that up a little bit. It goes to there. Okay, so that one had the um, should have the right spacing one one four. Let's see if it'll bark at that one. Oh, and the next one, 0.116. So we get more additional decimals there to work with. All right, so all of that gets it um, gets it to be fully defined. And 
Maybe too much. Alright, so doing the control select, trying to get all of these in. Alright, see what we get. Highlight and mirror. Doesn't like uh, that one, so we're going to have to mirror about. Okay, so except for the few that I missed, we're in pretty good shape. <laughs> now the fun part, figuring out which uh, which of those I missed. All right, so this is getting a little bit long. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make the correction, and we'll pick up the uh, the text next time.